Hello, YouTube listeners, students, colleagues. Once again, this is Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD, Professor of Computer Science at El Camino College, Torrance. Today, I want to talk to you about a function called toString for a class. Uh, languages like modern language like Java, C Sharp have a built in two string function in their object class, which is at the top of hierarchy. Each class can override it to <clears throat> customize to the class. Uh, C classes are not derived from the object class, but still you can write a two string function. Two string function is very useful because you could have class data <clears throat> converted to, to a string and then you are free to write that string to console or to a file or to a database and if you have a program where you are you don't know ahead of time whether class will be writing to console or to a graphical environment then your two string function can be very useful because it gives you the string version of the class data which you can publish on any media so it's a very useful function <clears throat> and C++ is as powerful as any other language to write this function I'm just going to demo you for a class and how this two string function is done so let's go to Xcode for that my compiler okay I have to click here to get it so <clears throat> the includes that I'm gonna do right now are our stream string uh, many because I'm gonna format some floating point numbers and most crucial include is s stream full form of this is string stream so this is this has two objects in it o string stream that i'm going to use today and i string stream which would be topic of another video not today so first let me show you the class <clears throat> so we have a student class and it has private data member first name last name age on last birthday and GPA GP is a floating point number so it's gonna have to be formatted before we can print it that's why I have IOMNIP here so I have only two members in the public area the constructor it takes input for the first name user defined last name age on the last birthday and the GPA and I simply set class members to the argument that are sent to explicit constructor I can give default values to all these and that way I'll have my default and explicit constructor folded into one and I just didn't want to do too much writing so I just left those out because I'm only going to be using explicit constructor okay okay <clears throat> most important thing we get to the two string function okay so I'm not going to spend too much time explaining these two constants consts purpose of this constant const is that we don't want two string function to be altering values of the class data member that constructor already set that means two string will have read only access the meaning of this const is read only access to class data members <clears throat> meaning of this const is while the function is returning the string as it's supposed to that string cannot be altered 
strings are not immutable in C++. So that's why to make them immutable during return mechanism, you have to put at the const in the front. Okay. Once again, details of that is another video, another time. <clears throat> but meaning of this is that, hey, when this function returns a string, you can change it. Afterwards, you can do anything you want, but during the return, you can't change it. That's the meaning of this const. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we declare here O string stream object called buffer. What's the meaning of this buffer? This buffer would be a buffer like any other buffer. So how this might look like object buffer. It would be a storage of characters and formatting flags. So <clears throat> first I add to the buffer and notice this insertion stream uh, operator. Insertion stream operator works just the same way with O string stream object, the way it works for C out or off stream object. There's actually absolutely no difference. Okay. So think of this that when you're outputting to the console, C out, arrow, arrow, and you're doing a whole bunch of those, whole bunch of C outs, then you are deposit, depositing all that data into an output buffer. Once buffer is filled, it will be dumped to the console. Same thing with the file writing that you take an off stream object and you write to using off stream object arrow arrow extraction operator then you are writing to a file buffer and once that buffer is filled data is written in the file something similar is going on here but this buffer is only in the sense it's building you something from which a string of this buffer can be extracted later okay that's the that's the kind of beauty of this whole thing so <clears throat> when i do buffer fix show point set position 2 meaning of that is that whatever is put in the buffer these formatting flags are applied to floating point data in that buffer as you know all these things only apply to floating point data they don't affect anything else Oh, thank God, some students understand that. Some students takes forever to understand that none of this applies to integer. Integers don't have formatting. Okay, so so just understand this will apply to all the floating point data that we are going to put into this buffer. So then, first thing added to the buffer is student name. So my object buffer now, as soon as I do this part. It will look like this <clears throat> and then let's say student first name was John so I'm outputting John to the buffer so John will be there I'm not putting a space it will be there I'm outputting the last let's say last name was Doe I'm outputting that one to the buffer and then ENDL so slash and line break will go to the buffer and then student age, this literal string is added to the buffer. <clears throat> and let's say age was 22. So 22 will go to the buffer. Then there's years. So years will go to the buffer. And then slash n. And then I'm putting student GPA so this string will go to the buffer. They just get added as you use the arrow arrow operator and the data after that, literal or otherwise. So let's say GPA is 3.4. That got added to the buffer. And then ENDL at the end, slash n got to the buffer. OK. So <clears throat> if I have John Doe, age 22 years, GPA 3.4, 
and I do this code, and actually 3.4 will be, I don't think it changes here, or maybe it does, I have no idea. But let's say this got applied to set precision 2, so it'll be looking at 3.40, okay? So, <clears throat> my object buffer looks like this after the code on line 33. Then I want function to return the string version of this buffer. So all you have to do, there's a str function in the string stream object. I just return buffer dot str parenthesis. Okay, function call, all you need is parenthesis. And that's it. I have, in a way, made the string version of my class data. Now, this function will return a string. That string could be published to the console or written to the file, written to a database, or written to a web page, or written to the graphical part of an application. So two string function give you complete freedom. You don't have to write print functions. You don't have to worry about how to write a print function so can, it can write to a graphical text box or something. So all this problem is eliminated. Your class is fully independent now. That string version of the object is available. Okay. So I don't want to belabor that point. So Let's look at the main function. I create an object, first name John, last name Doe, age 22, GPA 3.7. And then I say see out s dot to string. So as soon as I do that, this function is called and object buffer is built and buffer dot str returns the string version that gets printed to the console. Okay, let's run it. Actually, previous data was there, so, but I'll just run it again. Okay, and lo and behold, we get the string version of the object S, John, John, Do, Do, age 22 years, GPA 3.7, formatted to decimal point because we use the set precision two, fixed show point set precision two, and that's it. So that's the whole thing. That's the big advantage of writing a two-string function. Now, I do understand that now in C++ 11, there is a function called to underscore string. Okay, so this function is good for getting the string version of integers. Okay. But if you pass floating point numbers to it, so if you pass, let's say, 15, <clears throat> you can do C out then yeah, it'll, it'll output 15. Of course, you can do it directly. That's not a big deal. But you can add this to a string, bigger string, using the plus operator. But I have huge objections to this function. I mean, I think it's pretty useless because it cannot format floating point numbers to significant figures that you want and so on. So to me, this thing is, pretty useless. I never use it for that reason. But at times for num integers you can use it. Okay. <clears throat> to me a more solid application is using a string stream object and because you can format float floating point numbers and you can keep adding until you are done and then you can return the a string version of the, what is stored in your buffer. All right, so this is it, short video. This is Dr. Singhal saying goodbye from El Camino College, Torrance, California. Thank you.